Africa is reported to be the least urbanized continent, but having the highest rate of urbanization. This is comparable to the rate of population influx to urban areas. About 60% of Africa's population lives in slums. The slums are squalid and not well planned. They pose a challenge in the provision of sustainable sanitation in cities. Uganda, like most African countries, is faced with the issue of slum areas. They are mainly concentrated around Kampala and other urban areas like Entebbe, Mbarara, Jinja, Gulu, Mbali, Lira, and Arua, among others. Uganda's Boise is much similar to Kiwera slum in Kenya and Soweto of South Africa. Slum areas are an epitome of poverty and squalor. Providing sustainable sanitation in slums is a big challenge. Lack of legal status of slum areas, less with poor accessibility, limited funding for sanitation systems, and population dynamics. Boise is a typical slum area around Uganda's city of Kampala. It is bubbling with poor sanitation, flooding and poverty. This area was originally a wetland, but reclaimed for settlement as a result of rural urban migration. The area is characterized by frequent flooding in the rain seasons, compounded by poor drainage, poor sanitation facilities, poor accessibility and lack of a solid waste management system. This has resulted into a public health risk and pollution of the environment. Waterborne diseases have subsequently emerged, leading to diseases like dysentery, cholera, diarrhea, and malaria. <laughs> Kawempe health officials say there is a link between poor sanitation and a number of diseases in the area. Groundwater and surface water are also heavily polluted with organic matter nutrients and heavy metals. This results into deterioration of the water quality downstream. The water quality within Makshin Bay of Lake Victoria, for example, has deteriorated because it receives a lot of pollutant from the city and most especially from informal settlements and slums. In order to contribute to provision of sustainable sanitation in urban slums, a research project codenamed Siksa was carried out by UNESCO IHE Institute for Water Education in collaboration with Makere University and Kampala City Council. One of the uh, research components of project is looking at uh, sanitation technologies for urban slums. There are a number of uh, sanitation technologies that have been used somewhere else in other regions and they can be adopted and implemented and tested in the slum areas. And uh, in particular, we are looking at uh, the best way of how we can select suitable technologies so they can be used in urban slums on a sustainable basis. Another component we are looking at uh, quantification of the microbial risks emanating from the discharge of waste streams in urban areas. Here we are looking at uh, grey water solid waste and surface water that are heavily contaminated. The second part of the Skusa research project is hydrology. In this part of the research we are trying to understand the transport of contaminants in urban slum areas. 
One of the most important contaminants we are looking at as a project are nutrients. In excess, these nutrients lead to deterioration of water resources, and one of the major consequences of this is excessive growth of algae, uh, growth of the water hyacinth, and death of fish and other aquatic uh, organisms in, in waters. So in this project we want to understand what are the sources of these nutrients in slum areas and what are the mechanisms that control the transport of these nutrients to downstream areas. Once we know this, we feel we can come up with appropriate strategies in order to improve sanitation in urban slum areas. As part of the research, Philip constructed the typical gauging station along the Boise and Soba drainage channel to measure the flow in the drainage channel in order to understand how much nutrients are released by the slum areas into the water network. We have two of these installed. This is one installed at the inlet of the slum. Then we also have another one further in front at the outlet of the slum. So with this gauging station is basically to measure discharge. And why do we need discharge is because we are trying to understand the loads of pollutants living in the slum area. And you need discharge in order to compute these loads. According to research findings, these nutrients come from pit latrines and infiltration from grey water that is poured on the compound of people's backyards. But you might be surprised why is this water not clear? Because this is groundwater which is coming from the ground. It is turning green and the main reason why it is, it is like this is because of nutrients. In fact, this is one of the things we are trying to study. What is the impact of slums to the nutrient discharge to downstream areas? So since it is green, that, that means there is a lot of nutrients coming from the ground and of course we relate this to the, to the existing on-site sanitation activities in this area. The impact of this slum on pollution load is much higher than imagined, leading to the contamination of downstream surface water bodies, killing fish and other aquatic organisms. Another big challenge affecting the highly populated areas of Waisi is overflooding which destroys people's properties and also results into a major public health problem. Here, when it rains, most families are displaced. Whenever it rains, we are in a terrible situation. Associate Professor Dr. Jan Willem Foppen from UNESCO IHE highlights issues leading to flooding and how much contaminated water affects Lake Victoria. There is a lot of flooding, but also important is that this water is heavily contaminated, heavily contaminated. And uh, it is not only contain, contaminating this area, but it's also contaminating the entire catchment downstream of uh, Boise Slum. The majority of the excreta disposal facilities in Boise 3 are elevated pit latrines because of the high water table. The user load is high resulting in the pit latrine chambers filling fast. This has resulted in unhygienic practices such as discharging pit contents into the drains during the rainy season and also in an adjacent excavated shallow pit. There is a problem of solid waste management in Blaise 3 and uh, one of the problems is that they compromise the hydraulic uh, capacity of uh, these open drainage channels. And as you can see, the culverts are basically covered by the, the solid waste. Yeah, another problem is that uh, people here use uh, the polythene bags, so-called so flying toilets, uh, for excreta disposal and they end up discharging the contents in, the, in the open uh, drainage channels. 
when we are doing sampling, we realize that the concentration of pollutants here is actually very, very high compared to the one in the main drain. It was actually something like 10 times more than the one in the main drain. Spring water is also used by residents for domestic purposes, especially those who cannot afford to pay for piped water. However, the research found out that the springs are contaminated with viruses and bacteria.